Hello and welcome to another episode of Sexual Confidence on Tap with Shannon Etheridge and friends. And today I have some new friends to you, old friends to me. I want you to welcome Brad and Kate Aldrich to the show. I met Kate and Brad many, many moons ago at some sort of conference. We've attended multiple conferences together at this point. Um, but Kate came to one of my Women at the Well workshops, I want to say probably the second year that I was doing them. So it's over a dozen years ago. And around that time frame, they were also launching their own ministry called One Flesh Marriage. Mm-hmm. I want to hear... Uh, first, I want to hear about your story, how y'all met and how things evolved, but I want to hear more about One Flesh Marriage and how that has evolved, because I know that you guys have learned so much on this journey. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. You start. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Brad and I, we started our ministry in 2010, but way back even before that, we were high school sweethearts, um, started dating when we were 16 and 17. Mm-hmm knew nothing about anything at that point we thought we knew everything about everything at of course that point. <laughs> we knew nothing about nothing at that point um but knew there was something really special between the two of us and not only that being completely transparent it got us both out of some really interesting home situations mm-hmm. um we're super thankful for that but we uh yeah we have grown we've been married now for 25 years together yeah over 30 25 the big silver yep and uh over that time we've been blessed with four amazing kiddos we have two biological kids and two adoptive kids ages ranging from 21 to 16 so we're we've got some young adults out in college and we've got some kids still home in high school which is tons of fun i love teenagers i absolutely think they're the funnest most amazing group of people i agree they're also very most challenging. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I say you're in the thick of parenting when you're, when you have teenagers. Yep. Oh, uh, <laughs> so mom and dad know nothing. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yes. So Brad and I, that's what we're currently doing in life. And um, yeah, over the years, we, we had great intentions for our marriage. We hoped that it would start well. That was our deepest desire, but quickly we found ourselves disillusioned and struggling with things, sexual intimacy included. And that led us on a journey of yeah. trying to figure out those things. And then Brad, I think you can share more about like wow. in the ministry. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we honestly started our, our blog back when people actually blogged. Um, we, <laughs> yeah. we when started, people actually read. Read, right. <laughs> We started One Flesh Marriage, honestly, as Kate and I kind of processing out loud what we had done to try and change and fix our marriage. That, that was our, our mission. We really didn't think it was going to go much further than that, but it, it kept growing and kept growing. Um, I have a background in counseling. I have a, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in Pennsylvania. Um, so I was doing some counseling. Um, Kate was doing a whole lot of ministry in different areas as well. I eventually left the counseling world, went to be a, a pastor of marriage and family at a large church. Mm. Um, and along the way, with our family growing, with uh, just ministry changing, yeah, a lot's changed. We we decided to end One Flesh Marriage as a blog but at the same time, launched the Still Becoming One podcast mm-hmm. um, so that we could still have that voice into marriage ministry. And like you, Shannon, we recognize we have a passion for helping individuals and couples figure out their next steps. So we've been doing more and more coaching um, and really helping people to try and figure that out. And we now have officially launched um, the Aldrich Ministries Coaching Network, where we, we're coaching, but we also have several other um, marriage ministry people and uh, on board with us that is offering coaching to people around the world. That is so awesome. I love the play on the words, going from one flesh marriage to still becoming, still becoming one. one. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So the whole becoming a... I wish every church had a marriage and family pastor. That just sounds so important. Why doesn't every church have one? 
It's a good yeah. question. Uh -huh. um, I, I used to say, like, you know, it should be the church's third hire, right? I get you got the senior pastor and then look, somebody has to take care of the kids. Right. But then like, who is the, who is taking care of couples? Who is helping them to figure out and navigate this thing? And it's something most churches don't pay attention to. Right. Yeah. So I want to know what was the first inkling that maybe what you guys had learned along the way with your own journey should be shared with others that it needed to, to branch out and evolve to help other couples? <laughs> I, I can answer that one. Okay. Because um, <laughs> like we had gone through some really rough times, but God was so faithful and really started building us. And there was a season where Kate really did undergo some intentional changes towards our relationship. And all of a sudden I was seeing a ton of things change. And, you know, yes, I, I would like to say I was doing some things. God was certainly challenging me on, on my part, but I was seeing her do a ton of changing. And I didn't want to ask why, because I was nervous I'd mess it up. <laughs> so I stayed quiet for, I don't know, months. Like, it, How'd that we, work for you? <laughs> we'd have lots of conversations about it, but we wouldn't talk about like why things change or what things were doing done different. And finally, after months, I kind of said, so, so people around us who thought we had a good marriage before are asking what, what's different. So, so what would you tell them? <laughs> and we started Brilliant. having a conversation about a friend what, of mine what would wants we tell to people? Know. <laughs> yeah. I'm asking so. for a friend. Yeah. yeah, I guess I didn't feel that long to me that it was months. But yes, you did just kind of ride the wave of this is great for a while. And then, yeah, we started sharing with people and for some reason thought we would write it <laughs> on a blog I don't know it, it probably wasn't super well thought out but then like we were we just imagined that our friends would read it all the people were kind of asking these questions and we were we were getting opportunities in local churches to kind of share um and then it just it grew beyond that and so yeah that's just kind of how it all evolved how it grew yep. yeah yeah so, so what are you guys noticing the way that I like to put it is that I think that counselors and coaches, we have to have our fingertips on the pulse point of where people are at and where couples are at. Yeah. What are you guys seeing? Where are couples at as far as the work that you guys are doing? Yeah, that's a great question. You want to start, babe? Or you want me to? Sure. I, I mean, I, I think one of the things that we have recognized, we've seen is um, that so many are at this place where they've tried all the tools. They've done like the the stuff on how do we talk better or how do we have communication? How do we have date night? Like they've done a lot of the tools and yet they keep having the same fights over and over again. Mm -hmm. And they'll come to us and finally saying things like, I don't even know why I'm angry or I don't even know why I'm yelling like that or I don't know why I did X, Y, Z and and just feel like they're at the end of the rope because they've tried all the tools but they haven't seen change right and they're yeah. totally frustrated and oblivious to how to get there so what do yeah. you guys do what are the sharpest tools in your tool belt to help a couple find the breakthrough that they're looking for yeah i think that brad and i are passionate about uh we've trained under dan allender with his story work love him and oh Yes, he's amazing. And mm -hmm. we've just found it's really helpful to help couples be able to understand why they're doing what they are today or why they were set up to do what they are today mm -hmm. and how that is impacting their dynamic. Because once they can understand those things for each other in a deeper way, then we find the tools. Well, we find just knowing that information is super helpful to them. Oh but gosh. The, the sure. Actually can work then because if we don't understand why we're doing what we're doing we continue to do it because there's no information there and there's there's a ability to enter in with your spouse with empathy yeah. i love the fact that i know brad's story better than anybody else on the planet including mm. parents, right and i consider would that would you say that would you say that you sometimes 
know, know his story better than he knows it himself. Because I think that when we grow up with a story, we yeah. can't see the forest because of the trees. Sure. And our partner, if they yeah. know our story, sometimes they can catch that aerial view. Yeah. Um, we can do that for him. I, I would I would agree with that, Shannon, but I will say, like every time we do stories with couples, mm -hmm. we get to this place where one spouse looks at the others and says, I knew the details of those stories, but I never knew the emotions of those stories. The the impact. The yeah. impact of it. Whatever. Right. Like, so they, they heard that that thing happened to you. They heard that, you know, that that's how your mom said something to you, but they never knew how it carved something in your heart that still comes into an effect today. And because they don't understand that emotional imprint, they probably rip the scab off that wound over and over by things that they Runs. say or do that they don't mean to hurt. They just don't right. understand how reflective of that original trauma it actually Absolutely. feels to that person. Absolutely. And I would, I would say there's some truth though, to what Shannon is saying, because there are times I can see it playing out for Brad and he can't, but we've gotten so comfortable with each other with language that, that is not hurtful to be able to say, what well, do you think this is playing out there? So it's not, I don't think I know his story better, but I think there are times I can see it playing out that he can't. Exactly. <laughs> is too close yeah. Um, yeah and so that's where i definitely see it interacting and same for me for yeah sure. well that leads to my next question how has it impacted your relationship to know each other's stories so well and again i'm not talking about the details of the story i'm talking about the emotional imprint of the story how it impacted you yeah it it's been um revolutionary and life-changing mm -hmm. for yeah. us to be able to know that brad and i we actually had to go back and do a lot of repair after we learned our story work because there were times we would we just said to each other, you know, I didn't really hold that story very well. I heard your parents talk about it. I may have even joined in with laughing with them about it. And I didn't really hold it well. And now mm -hmm. I honor that that's a really tough story for you and what it's what it's written on you, what what that leads you to believe in certain situations. Yeah. And not that we live in a place of like pity for that it's a it's a place no. of empathy and sensitivity and compassion so, yeah yes yeah. and understanding and kindness and gentleness yeah that i think has revolution revolutionized our marriage in many ways what mm -hmm. what would you add to that love Oh, I, I mean, I was going to say there was a point just very practical, right? There was a point just a couple of weeks ago where I tweaked my back and I was in a lot of pain for a couple of days. And it's not just that Kate went, okay, I'm going to have to take care of him, which that's nice and all, but she knew how that was connecting to some of my stories. And she knew how some of my not being able to do things was creating these automatic negative thoughts that pop up in my head and she could start speaking to them before I even necessarily recognize them. Right. And that changed the dynamic of that. Well, and, and, and then you have to bring in my piece of this story where I grew up with a hypochondriac mom. So when we were first married, Brad, um, experiencing physical pain, sickness, things like that. I was like, my defense growing up because that was constantly around me and and brad will even tell you i struggle to allow myself to relax when i feel sick mm -hmm. but my reaction to brad for so many years was like oh my gosh dude just deal with it and move on oh so this was our dynamic because it comes mm -hmm. from both of our stories and so when he was, you know, his back was bothering him this time, I was just like, okay, what do you need? Like, how can I be most helpful? And surprisingly, I think Brad has learned in the freedom to feel what he's feeling, he actually gets better quicker. Much. And so we do it so much differently than yeah. we have in the past. If that makes sense. That's just a really. Totally. I was actually, before you explained more, and I'm so glad that you did, I was going to ask Brad, can I grab you by the ankle and pull you a little bit deeper on this one? Because I want to know yeah. like, what happened? I think it is really beneficial for listeners to hear examples of you know, what does this look like? It, sure. So often we talk in philosophies and theologies and all that, but to hear oh, the practicalities I, of what I this mean, looks like is 
So that's some of Kate's practicality. I can say for mine, a lot of my wound stories, the bigger things that happened in my life in, in childhood and whatnot told me a lot about powerlessness and, and led me to feel like I was powerless. I didn't have any choices. And so something that then physically comes in and takes that that power away, it says I can't do anything, reinforces those negative thoughts very Evidence quickly. to support the theory that you've had Correct. as a child. Correct, right. Mm -hmm. So it just hits all those buttons. And it like yeah. that can very easily emotionally spiral. And in the past, when I you know didn't know this stuff, it would emotionally spiral. Mm -hmm. And now I can go, oh yeah, okay, there's that emotion. That's why that emotion's there. I can acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. I can talk to Kate about it if I need to, but I can also like combat it by going, Hey, just because my back hurts right now, doesn't mean I'm powerless, mm -hmm. well, but I, I can actually speak to that. I was going to ask, what does powerless represent to you? What message did you get as a child around needing help? Mm -hmm. uh, that I had to do it on my own, that if I needed help, that somehow I wasn't smart enough, mm. um, that, that I wasn't, you know, capable mm -hmm. and that I really needed to just figure it out on my own. That if, if I needed help, it was weakness. And mm -hmm. was this a message given to both sons and daughters or was it a masculinity thing of men <laughs> can't be weak? I, I love Kate's smile in that. Cause she absolutely knows that. Um, it, I will not actually say it was a masculinity thing. Um, maybe it was. I, it was never caged as that to me, but it was very different than what my sister would hear, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and in many ways, she was like, look, she can do it, so why can't you? Kind of th those kind of messages would come in. Yeah, yeah. comparing siblings is never mm -hmm. or, or rarely a good idea. <laughs> Yeah. I shouldn't say never. Although I might be able to say never in that circumstance. Yeah. <laughs> well, and even further, to take it even further, like this stuff just fascinates me. Like mm -hmm. Brad heard the same message from his circumstances. Deal with it yourself. And Brad, I'm not sure how I think I know how you describe it. That became crippling and like he didn't know which way to go. I heard the same message from a hypochondriac mom of just deal with it yourself because there's no room for you to be sick because I'm always dealing with something. And my strategy was very much like, girl, make it happen. Figure out a way to make it happen. And I become very fearful when we don't have motion. Mm -hmm. Brad becomes fearful trying to get the motion. Mm -hmm. And so you can see how the two just didn't work together. Until it creates... Um, it creates a dynamic that now it's a whole third element of the relationship. Yeah. And I, I would say every couple has these dynamics all the time because this is a little blip in our, like this was a couple of days in our relationship and it wasn't like, it was just a thing, but we now have learned that we go back and we talk about the stories and talk about the emotions that are coming up for both of us as a way to grow that intimacy together, but also just as a way of taking care of each other. Mm, I love that. I totally love that. So you had experience in looking at your own stories and figuring out where they overlap and how you trigger each other. How did you spin that? How did you turn that? How did you let that evolve into a ministry to help other people see their stories and the impact that, because I understand that storyline is a big part of the tools that you have in your tool belt. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, we just, I, I think it's been part of the evolution of us because I think we did really start our ministry much more with sharing our own experience in marriage. I think when we were younger, we tried to be very cautious writing. I don't know if we really thought our parents would stumble upon our blog, but we tried to be respectful mm -hmm. and not bring in certain elements. So we were sharing more stories from our own marriage, which we found was what was pulling people in. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've experienced that too, or you've experienced something hard. They can and identify. Then, yes. And then we were giving them the tools. I think as we've gone even deeper into our stories personally outside of our marriage, 
we've realized how much when we now sit with a couple, they say certain things. And Dan Allender talks about being curious and you're just like, hmm, that's where's really that come from? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yep. Yes. Like there's so many times that we hear somebody say something and we're like, yeah, I want to know more about where that came from, where that developed from, not in a, in a, you've done something wrong kind of way, right. but in just curious. Well, and isn't it, isn't it fun when you ask that question as coach and the partner feels as if they know the answer, but as that person begins to unpack, all of a sudden their partner might say, I never knew that about you. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's like yeah. things like, bubble to the surface. It was yeah. it the crucible where the gold, you know, the, yeah, the, no, that's yeah. exactly the right. Stuff comes up to the surface. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, and, and for us, like coaching and counseling has always been a part of our ministry, no matter where we were. Um, and honestly, we sat down, Kate and I, when we were doing one flesh marriage, we sat down with some other marriage ministry um, people back like 15 years ago, we kind of met with them and sat down with them and talked about a vision of being able to do more two-on-two -two coaching or one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, just really helping people through this. Well, 15 years ago, the technology to do all of that was not really there. Right. And so we're just so excited now that we could partner with amazing people like Paul and Larry Byerly from the Generous Wife and Generous Husband. One of the first books that I read on yep. this topic years ago. Yeah. So so they're coming on board as as some of our coaches um, we're partnering with scott and jenny means from heaven made marriage um, and others who are just doing amazing things out there in the world of ministry and going okay we can work together and really helping people um, through their story through the challenges that they're seeing in their relationships the word that's coming to my mind is custom tailored Yes, exactly. You're really looking not just to create an online program or a book or, you know, one size fits all type of description about how to fix your marriage in three easy nope. steps. You are really going to the heart of where people are hurting and helping them heal individually and as a couple yeah. and helping them make sense out of their story. Talk yeah. to me about the impact that a person experiences when their story makes more sense to them and they start recognizing the way that I hear women describe it. Um, and sometimes men, but mostly women will say used to, I had no idea how I was nagging or how I was critical or whatever, but now it's like, I'm watching myself from far away going, stop it, close your mouth. Don't say that. And, and it's like, she's able to coach herself through that process because she's become more aware. Yeah. I'm sure that you can have, or, you know, toss out other examples of what impact does it have for a person to become more self-aware? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, it's, it changes everything. And I always remind people like when they become self-aware, there can also be a stage of like, well, how do I change this? How, like, I see it happening now, all of these kinds of things. And I, I remind people, well, the reason your body and brain has gotten so familiar with it is because you were a child when it all happened and you figured out strategies as a child. And that's a child brain that's not fully developed. Mm. And now we're looking at it with a brain of, well, for me, a middle-aged adult. And you're like, why? How, how come I couldn't handle all that? Well, you weren't designed to at that age. And so remembering it's like working a muscle, trying to recognize it and honor it and be in a different space. And so um, I find people are just so encouraged when they're like, I recognized it. And sometimes in the beginning, as they're becoming more aware, they'll say, I recognized it after and they'll feel mm -hmm. bad. Right. Hindsight's 2020. Mm -hmm. But you recognized it. Three months ago, we didn't know what was going on. Right. Exactly. So it's still a victory. Yes. The goal is to be trying to recognize it as it's happening. Um, and it's just so empowering for people to realize what's going on and that there is hope. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've heard Mylon and Kay Yurkovich describe it as, and they're the authors of How We Love about attachment yeah. styles. Yep. I've heard them describe it that basically you have the same arguments over and over in your marriage. It's just details change, but yep. there's a core pattern here that keeps repeating itself. Do you guys yep. 
Oh. Oh. You might describe that philosophy. Do you see the patterns oftentimes? So yeah. often that we usually tell couples, hey, let's deconstruct this argument because you're actually not arguing about, you know, who did this or didn't do this. You're actually arguing about these deeper things. Let's let's use this whatever example yeah. to to kind of highlight what's really going on. And it almost always comes back to like, oh, well, when this kind of thing was said, this emotion came out of me. I don't know why that emotion came out of me. And then we go, oh, here we go. Here, let's let's figure out where that came from. Reminds me of that little video clip of it's not about the nail. Yep. <laughs> really, oh. It's so dead on. <laughs> and that that is a that is a video that has been contentious between the two of us forever. Brad thinks oh, it's yeah. the most amazing video ever, and I she always loses me at I snag all my all sweaters. my sweaters. <laughs> so yeah. funny. Okay, so Brad, I'm going to toss out a question yeah. specifically to you. I can just hear a husband saying well all that's in the past why are you judging up the past i'm i'm yep. a future man i'm you know let's just talk about what happened today we don't need to revisit all that we don't have to look at childhood stuff that's just ridiculous so this is where i usually go to the more logical guys who need the a plus b equals c kind of formula because that's some of how we're designed um i will usually point them to dr daniel almond's book your brain is always listening where they can really look at the automatic negative thoughts that get created by traumas, that get created by things that happened a long time ago and get restarted now. And, and sometimes when I get guys doing this, I'll say they're like the kind of negative bat signal, right? Every guy knows the bat signal, right? It's <laughs> It's this idea that something happened and all of a sudden there's this flash that says this negative thing in your brain mm -hmm. and you don't even know why it's there. Well, it's up to you to figure out why it's there and what, how do we want to respond to that signal? Because yeah. we can't just ignore it because it just kind of floats in your head. And I think every guy gets those ideas of, oh yeah, I have these negative thoughts. I just stuff them down and try to ignore them and pretend they're not there. Well, it doesn't work very well. How's that working for you? Right. 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 And, she so, feels and most so of them have no idea. And she feels so frustrated that he's not opening up to her. It's like, well, he's not opening up to himself. <laughs> right. He's not just hiding it from you. He's trying to hide it from himself. Yeah. So true. Yeah. yeah. So what advice do you have for couples, whether they're just starting out or whether they've been married for decades about how do you begin this story work and under, understanding yourself better and understanding your relational dynamic better? I love that. That's a great question. And actually, Brad and I do a fair amount of premarital and <laughs> I think they don't know what they're getting into with us, but we, we do story work with them. Like we start on the topics and then we quickly get into their family stories. Um, and so I think it's just understanding that it honors us to be able to know what those stories are for, for mm -hmm. ourselves. We get to honor ourselves and our, our future spouse or yeah. our spouse gets to honor that with us. And it gives us so much information that we can use. Yeah. And when we meet with these premarital couples, they're like, oh, right. They're like, oh, that's, that's why that's happening. Mm -hmm. And, and already we're helping them to process it in a different way. And I think good grief, Brad, if we had had story work. Oh my gosh, we would have been exactly. in a very different place. <laughs> but, like, but I think with, with, started with it, can you imagine? Would mm -hmm. be great. But any couple, even if you've been married for 30 years, yep. 50 yep. years, right? There is a place where if, if you can look at the things that you keep doing that you go, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I responded that way. I don't know why that thing came out of me, whether it was yelling or running away or whatever. If we can look at the patterns and go, that's not what I want. I'm not sure why I do that. Then start there with curiosity to go, well, how did I learn that? How did I learn that strategy? But who taught me the, these things? Why, why is that there? And that helps you to kind of start to see how your story is impacting your today. Yeah. And that, that's one of those places where it gets practical. Sure. Well, in another case, I don't want to say case study, but an example of what 
I think young people are often thinking when they get married is that why would I bother talking to a counselor or coach about my mom and my dad and my siblings? Cause I'm, I'm moving out of that house. I'm packing my suitcase and I'm moving into this apartment with my new husband or wife. And they literally think that that suitcase holds no emotional baggage. It's just a toothbrush and a pillow. And a, it's amazing how blind we are to yeah. how much of our family of origin stuff that we drag into the new family that we create when we get married. So what is your advice to someone who is really just starting out in their relationship mm -hmm. and doesn't see that there's going to be a connection? You don't just marry the person, you marry their whole family and vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What do you say to that couple? Goodness. I, I don't know. I, I would just, Brad knows I love snark. I would say uh, they're in those suitcases. They're coming with you. <laughs> <laughs> like they may not be living in your house, hopefully not, but, but they are coming with you to some extent. And it's important for us to know what, what pieces have come with. Yes. That's not Brad and I, it's a very like empathetic, kind mm -hmm. journey. It's not like you as a kid signed up for, Oh, I want to, I want to respond that way. Mm -hmm. Right. Many of our responses from our childhood got us seen and heard. And yeah. once learn we're seen and heard we're like I'm gonna keep tapping that because what yep. kids want to be seen and heard and so you know it, it's not a journey of blame Brad and I always talk about the honor and honesty which Jay Stringer talks about mm -hmm. of like we we want to honor your family and we understand in the the church that's huge but honesty needs a place too and if 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 we're only honoring we're not being honest mm -hmm. and I think oftentimes we're taught in the church if we're being honest, we're not honoring. Mm. Brad and I really give people a space to elevate honesty for a time. We'll we'll bring back honor, but let's talk about what it was like honestly for you, so that you know what it's bringing to the table. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah, and it reminds me of Brene Brown's concept that until you can say no, your yes means nothing. Yep. That you, you have to learn boundaries and understand how your family culture follows you around and the people pleasers that we become or the avoiders or the yep. vacillators or the controllers yep. or the victims. It, it imprints us very, yes. very deeply. Um, okay. So now let me toss one more scenario out to you before we wrap up. What do you say to the couple or individual husband or wife who says, well, I mean, counseling is for crazy people. We're, we're fine. We're not crazy. <laughs> we're crazy. No, that's yeah. probably not the best. Ad. No, that wouldn't be. I, I would say like, Hey, is there a place where you are looking to grow in intimacy together? Cause that's really what we're about. We're yeah. about looking at the different places of intimacy in your relationship and going, how do we increase that? Mm -hmm. So you, you may be at an eight, and you go, wow, I, I want to figure out how to dial that up because I see God is going to use us. I see, you know, other things in our future where, you know, change might be coming, right? We often end up in struggles during change seasons. So right now it's strong. Let's jump into how do we make sure we keep it that way mm -hmm. so that we can go through that change season. So it doesn't have to be things are stressed and horrible and at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the other one I have to say, and this is speaking out there to the guys, because I, I see this much more often with guys, is there is a pattern where wives are asking their husbands for something different, for something to change, for something to be different in their marriage for so long. And then I end up seeing the guys whose wives have finally gone, I'm done, I'm out. And the, then the husband goes, oh, I guess I need to do something. And so often it's too late. Too little too late. Right. Yeah. And, and I just want to say, like, don't be that guy who changes after the divorce papers have filed. Right. And, like, and I say preventative medicine mm -hmm. is far cheaper than yeah. cancer and chemotherapy. Oh and that's yes. what coaching and that's what counseling, that's what therapy is really all about. And I think that the couples that I've enjoyed working with most are those that are still relatively new in their relationship and they recognize the value of preventative oh, yeah. medicine. And they're yeah. still talking with 
a, a tone of cherish and respect in their voice. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, you guys are going to be great to work with. Because, you, yeah, when you get that couple that comes in and their story hasn't just evolved, it has devolved for oh, a yeah. long, long time. And they've put off and put off and put off. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of times it is too little, too late. I, I said this to someone. I want to see if you guys agree. Um, the biggest mistake that either partner could ever make is assuming that the other one will never leave. Assuming that the other one will never leave. I don't have to change because they're not going to leave. It's complacency. It's complacency, right? And and then that can lead to this place of, I I don't have to do anything. It's not my responsibility. They just have to fix them themselves. If they have a problem, right, we point the finger. Yeah, they'll deal with it. It doesn't get anywhere. Yeah, I've heard a lot of post-divorce individuals make that statement that as they're looking in the rearview mirror, their observation is, I never thought they'd actually leave. Mm -hmm. Translation, I never really brought my best self to the change and evolution or evolution process because I didn't think I'd have to. Don't wait until you have to. This is something you get to do. Working on your relationship, becoming your more mature and responsible self, becoming a better lover, uh, becoming a better communicator, becoming more emotionally intuitive. These are opportunities that Mm -hmm. are just so within your grasp when your relationship is healthy. Don't wait until it's become so unhealthy that that just seems like pie in the sky because things are just so. Well, we get a lot of our premarital or seriously dating couples ask us like what what's the number one thing you tell people that impacts a marriage and makes it healthy Mm -hmm. and you know there's so many things people will point to but brad and i have learned and point to every time now it really is both of your softness and willingness to continue to work on you because i love that answer say it again say it again that, like a soft heart and a willingness to continue to work on you because on when you problems, on yourself yes when on problems yourself. come you have to be willing to like look at it from your perspective and from your story from all these things and you may not be able to fix it with all of that but if you can understand what is happening for you in in all these things in life and seek help when it's beyond something you just puzzle out yourself and are like okay now i know what's going on like that is what we see is uh, keeps people moving forward and feeling yeah. like, okay, the other person's invested. They're willing to be like, okay, you know what? I need to figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. It changes everything. So how can people get in touch with you if they want to learn more about the services that you provide, the ministries that you guys provide? Go for it. Ben. Well, you can find our coaching network at aldrichministries.com. And you can find out all about Kate and I, but you, all of our other coaches as well. Um, so you can do that. You can also follow us on our podcast, which is Still Becoming One, where you can find it on all of your podcast friendly networks, um, where we talk all things marriage and you know get to talk about what are the steps that you can make to keep working on that journey because that was you kind of mentioned the name change that was honestly us going man this one flesh marriage thing that's hard but you know what i don't know how to how to reach that but we can keep working towards it and see it as a lifelong goal still becoming one day by day guys thank you so much for your passion for the people that you serve for your willingness to come and share your insights with us today I couldn't love y'all more. I just so cherish the opportunities that we have had. Not that they've been that numerous, but I love that you guys, the way that I would describe you is you're not a puddle that's big and sparkly, but not deep at all. You're more of, you're the kind of people that I can sit down with and be like, let me tell you what's really going on in my life. And I love that about you guys. And I'm sure it makes you feel very safe to the clients who reach out to you. So keep up the God work. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. You bet. Well, this has been another episode of Sexual Confidence on Tap with Shannon Etheridge and friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. We love you for listening. And thank you for tapping on us. 